I'd like to show you how to create a GeoPDF in QGIS. This is a map, an electronic map, which has the georeferencing embedded in it. So on a suitable application, it can access that along with your GPS to show where you are on the map. I can create custom maps in QGIS, export them as GeoPDFs, and then use those in the app to locate myself as I navigate around. Now, this map I threw together pretty quickly that has an XYZ tile service from Google Terrain Maps, and it has some background data, for example, the color IR for the arrowhead. I've shown in previous videos how to create links to these tile services and web mapping services so I can create a custom map. I also have some MinGeo road and trails data for the arrowhead. Maybe I'm going to inspect roads for condition, and so I want to be able to find where I am on the road to annotate them. Look at the previous videos if you want to figure out how to do that and you're not sure. Once I have then my map styled and for the area I want, it's pretty straightforward. I go to Project, Import, Export, Export Map to PDF. Now, I have to make sure that I create a geospatial PDF. And here's a big warning. On the 310 version under which most of the videos are created, this hasn't been activated on the long-term release for the Mac at the time of my recording. The 316, the new release, the latest release version, does have this activated for the Macs. And on the PC side, it's in the long-term release and in the latest release. So if you can't do this because you have the Mac 310 version, you can download the 316 version. You don't have to delete your 310 version, just you can download it side by side and run the 316 version for this if you want. I pretty much take the defaults except for the dots per inch. I like to go with a little bit higher dots per inch. Now this makes my file four times as big because I'm doubling the uh, resolution in both directions. The sizes I use, the gain in clarity in the labels and in the vectors is better or worthwhile. If I had really large areas, I might not be able to do this. It might load slowly or not pan around, but this works for me. You can play with those to see what works for you. I don't rasterize the map. I allow it to central high geometries, but you can change those if you wish, if you get some use and there are things you want to fiddle with. I saved this to some file location, so I'll just call this my test map. And um, now I have to get it to my device. I email it to myself and then open the email on my device and download it into my application. Now I'm using an iPhone. It's a very similar process if you use a Android or other version. So here I'm going to go with my iPhone. So I'll show you that I open up my mail. And in my mail, I have that GeoPDF I mailed to myself. So it's from me to me. If I tap on the PDF, I get the download preview. And up in the upper right corner, I can download them that to a list of possible locations. Now, when I loaded the Avenza Maps application, it automatically put itself in my list of available applications. But if it doesn't, I could go to the more and add it as a list of applications. Here it is. It shows up. So I'll left click. And simple as that, it just loads it into my set or archive of maps. And the way Avenza Maps work, if I click on one of my saved maps, it shows the map and it shows my location is that blue dot. Now, as I um, travel around on my map, that blue dot will move, indicating my location. So very useful for a lot of in-field navigation, annotation, other capabilities, these GeoPDFs. Uh, and they're great because they can be used across a broad range of devices and applications. And you can make them in QGIS.